Hello, welcome to day three of our Simple Life Pattern Company, Isla Infinity Tunic and Dress. Um, today, we're going to do things a little differently than I had originally um, thought, because uh, after looking through the pattern, I realized that this was put together a little different than I was expecting it to be. Usually, when I have a mane and a lining, you put the mane together, and then you put the lining together, and then you put them together. But this, I, th I think it's because of the heart cutout. Um, what we need to do is we need to put the main and lining for the front together and then the main and lining for the back together and then we add those together. So today we're just going to be doing that. We're going to be prepping our front and prepping our back pieces. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to um, put our front and our back pieces together using the burrito roll. So we'll do some burrito roll today for the heart, and then we'll do some more tomorrow when we put the front and the back piece together. Because the way that it's um, constructed is just a little different than what I'm used to. So I was like, well, let's take a couple extra days and, and get it good and right. And then our last day we'll be doing our skirt and attaching that to the bodice. So nothing too crazy. I think it should still be a pretty laid back day um, today and breaking it up in little pieces really helps make it not so overwhelming when you're doing something new. So um, are you ready? Let's do this. I am <laughs> using this crushed velvet today and I'm really hoping it goes well. <laughs> I just heard, you know, I've, I've worked with Fabric, slippery fabrics before, you know, like this, but um, I just, I've heard horror stories and I'm like, mm. when I've done it before too, it's always kind of iffy. So let's hope that it goes well. All right. So let's add our camera in here. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our front lining piece and our front main piece, and we're just gonna lay them on top of each other, right sides together, lining up our shoulders and our neck here. Our neck scoop. So, I'm gonna line those up. I'm being especially um, careful with pinning this week since I've got the slippery fabric. All right, now that we've got that lined up, what we need to do is we need to measure down about an inch from each so shoulder seam. So I'm gonna take this off of that spot and put it more in the middle here. Same with this one. We're going to take the ruler here, measure down about an inch. This is a, um, a fabric marking pen that once you apply heat to it, it disappears. And I was hesitant about it at first, but it actually, they work great. This set is from, um, it's called Madame So. I got them on Amazon. Um, I actually put them on my Christmas list and got them <laughs> for Christmas. Um, but I know like Frickson from, I think it's Pilot makes Frickson pens that work as well. Um, but Taylor's chalk never works for me. Anytime I try and use chalk, it just never works out the way I want it to. It doesn't. So when I found pens, I was like, all right, let's try it. All right. So now that we marked an inch down, we need to now sew from that inch over to the next inch. And it's a three eight inch seam allowance. Uh, because we are starting in the middle, like, or an inch down, we want to use a sewing machine versus a serger because the serger is going to chop into that fabric and you're going to have a notch. <coughs> Pardon me. So by using the sewing machine, we're not going to cut any of the fabric while we're sewing, which, um, is good so that we don't have this a chunk taken out. Um, but make sure that you use a correct stitch. You want a nice uh, 
stretch stitch, whether you do a triple stretch or a lightning stitch or a zigzag, you want to make sure that you're using a stretch stitch for this because it's stretchy material. Um, the other thing I want to quick mention is um, just, just a moment. Sorry. If that's in the middle. That's half inch. Okay. Sorry, I don't usually do three inch on my sewing machine. So I needed to measure to make sure I have it accurate. Um I just lost my train of thought. There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Maybe it was that, make sure that you know the correct. Months. I'm sure it'll come to me. All right, so we're just going to sew from that one inch mark over to the other one inch mark. I was embroidering the other day. That's why it was so slow. Make sure that those raw edges are lined up. Okay. So one inch to one inch. So we've got it around the neck curve there. Um, now we just want to clip the curve. So, trim the threads here. And to clip the curve, all we're going to do is just take and make small clips up to, but not over our stitches, just kind of all the way around. Just make little clips. Actually wasn't too bad sewing so far. We gotta do the heart though, so let's hope, let's hope that goes just as nicely. So yeah, just making small little clips in the fabric, all that's gonna do is help it spread it out so that when you fold it over, it's not quite so um, bulky and it won't bunch up. So I'm doing about every half inch or so. Should be good. I'm just clipping as close to the stitch as I feel comfortable without actually going through it. And I like to use snips for this, just because I feel like I can control them a little bit better. All right. So now we just clipped through or clipped around the curve there. And like I said, what that's going to do is when we fold it over, it's going to help it lay nice and flat without getting too bulky in that area. So gorgeous. All right. So now that our front and our lining are put together, we need to put our back and our lining together. So similar thing for the front. We need to lay the back and the back lining piece right sides together. And right now what we're focusing on is this heart. 
So let's pin or clip around the heart. Making sure all those raw edges are nice and lined up. Now what we're going to do is we are going to stitch around this heart, again using three inch seam allowance. When we get to the points, we want to make sure to lift our presser foot and pivot the fabric. That way we can get a nice, sorry, I'm looking in this, that way we can get a nice sharp V instead of more rounded. So we're going to lift the presser foot at these um, corners. And then just make sure you follow your heart around, you know, so we'll start, let's start at the bottom of the V here, and then we'll follow the heart around, get to this other V, we'll lift our presser foot, pivot the fabric, and go the rest of the way around, and then that'll be done. So, start at the bottom V. Again, using a curved, or sorry, curved, using a uh, stretch stitch. Need three inch. Okay. Sorry. Like I said, I don't usually do three inch seam allowance on my, on my sewing machine. Sorry to just check and make sure. I was accurate. All right, starting at the bottom of the V. This is a little slippery. It's a little slickery. Nope. Sorry. This is quite slippery. It's not terrible, but let's try it. This way. All right, there we go. It's not actually that bad. It's just that I'm trying to get that V right on the nose, and I want to make sure my fabric's lined up properly. So that's more of where I'm. Probably just being a little too nitpicky about it. There we go. All right. So right at the point there of our bottom. And then let's sew around using a stretch stitch. Three eight inch seam allowance. here. I like to just kind of lift my presser foot a little bit. Just make sure nothing's bunching. Okay. It again. All right, we're almost to our second V. All right. Now I'm in that point, I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm just moving the fabric around so that I can start going up that next curve. Um, so just pivot it, that way you've got a nice sharp point then when you go to... are still matched up. Okay. 
can be right at that other point there. All right. Oof. My fabric slipped just a tad right here. So I missed this little bit on my lining. So I'm going to redo that little bit. All right, now, just like with the front, we need to just clip our curves so that they lay nice and flat for us. Hoping that little bit that I missed isn't going to throw everything off. Sometimes it likes to do that. Oof. Pardon me, just one moment, sorry. I'm just clipping all the way around. Why not? Again, just making sure to clip up to, but not through the stitches. Oh, goodness. Sorry, one more time. I'm really sorry. I was like, I don't want to blow my nose on camera. All right, now what we need to do is we need to separate the main in the lining and flip the lining down. So let's see how, oh wait. Okay, yeah, we need to pull the main and lining through the, or pull the main through the hole there, through the heart. So we're gonna pull Make it so that's right sides out for the main and the lining. Make sure I really get that V point. Let's see. Okay. All right, so now we've got our heart. How are we going to want to top stitch it? I didn't get my V right at the bottom, but that's okay. Oh, that's so cute. All right. So my bottom V just isn't quite as clean as I would like. That's all right. All right, moving on. <laughs> Separate the lining in main fabric and we need to flip the lining down. So we are going to separate them and flip the lining down. I believe that's what we need to do. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So separate, flip the lining down. Then starting from the very bottom of the bodice, grab both layers.
Starting from the bottom, very bottom of the bodice, grab both layers and roll them up. So maybe just at the top, you fold those down. Okay, so fold the top part of the back. So we're going to separate the main and the lining. Okay, I understand now. I get it now. All right. So our main and our lining are like this, right? Wrong sides together. We are going to take, separate it, and we're going to take the lining part, which is the back here, and we're going to fold just that top bit down. Then we're going to take the bottom hem, or the bottom raw edges, where the main and the lining are still together, because we didn't separate those, we just separated the top, and we're going to roll that up burrito style. And then we're going to match our shoulders. So now what we've got is we've got our main and our lining, are the top, our right sides together, and the bottom part of it is rolled up underneath or in between those pieces. So we've got here, we've got our shoulders and here's the bottom half of that bodice rolled up in between the shoulder pieces. All right, and then Um, center, you don't want to actually, okay, yeah, just like the front, we need to measure an inch down. So, let's measure an inch, and we will mark it. And an inch. And then what we're gonna do is just like with the front, we're gonna sew around three eight inches from the one inch mark to the other one inch mark. Making sure though, that when you get to this middle part, that your bottom isn't up in your seam allowance. You do not want to sew that on accident. All right, so stretch stitch three eight inches, starting at this one inch mark that we have. So down and around the curve, the neck curve here, up to the other one inch mark. Okay, here I am, just making sure that my bottom isn't in my seam allowance. Okay, I'm going up right to that one inch mark. Right. And now all we need to do is pull this out. Now we've got I don't know. <laughs> I do know. Sorry. <laughs> Just like, what is going on? Okay. So now we've got our neck together and our heart is all encased. I am going to um, top stitch around this heart just because I want it to be nice and crisp and flat and not want to slide at all. So I'm gonna top stitch that, but um, other than that, we're all done for today. Yay! Tomorrow we are going to put the um, top, the main and the bottom, the main and the back together, the front and the back together. Um, again, that, that involves burrito roll and a couple of different methods than what I'm used to. We're also gonna put our sleeves on tomorrow and then the next day we're going to put our skirt together and attach it to our bodice and we'll be all done. So yay, um, this turned out so great. I love this heart cut out uh, it, and it wasn't too crazy. Even with the crushed velvet, I was like, oh, I don't know, this is gonna be, it slipped and slided a little bit, but um, if I hold it up, I think you can see it. It's still a pretty good heart. 
uh, I'm holding it kind of crooked, but um, so yeah, I, I'm really excited. I love it. I think it's super cute and it wasn't tricky. Like it wasn't crazy. Don't mind my folded up piece in the back there, but wasn't crazy. Um, yeah. All right. So I will see you tomorrow when we put the um, front onto our back and we attach the sleeves. Like I said, I'm just going to quick do a top stitch. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's kind of silly to just sit here and top stitch. But um, if you also are going to want a top stitch, I, I would um, recommend ironing it and then top stitching just to get a nice, crisp, clean, um, clean lines. But yes, I will see you tomorrow when we finish up our bodice. Bye.